The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour. And of course, uh, we're rocking from the Fed announcement. Uh, they did go up three quarters of a percent and it was unanimous. And of course, as always, we meet at the appointed time. <laughs> The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So at the moment, uh, let's we'll see what the reaction is. We were, I think, about 28 points higher on the S&P. Uh, we broke support. Now the question is, is this going to be just like yesterday where it came back in? Sport uh, comes in at about uh, 28.48, 40, 20, uh, 38.45. Your next levels down are going to be 37.48 and then 36.50 uh, for support. So you've got uh, you know, 75 points if this does not hold from right here. That's seven tenths uh, of a percent down. Not uncommon to have uh, the market rush up and down after a Fed meeting, uh, but uh, eh, very hard to get. Uh, I think a lot of people. Uh, all self-actuated into buying today. NASDAQ uh, down a little bit more than that. Uh, it didn't really see much in the way of crude still down about the same and gold up about the same. So we'll see how this goes. Again, uh, Jay Powell will have his pressure at 230. That normally runs till about 315 or so. We'll have some questions. Uh, everybody will uh, try to read the tea leaves of what he says and make it a lot more or a lot less than what he actually says. And maybe by the close, we'll have some kind of consensus on what he really meant. But of course, uh, the, it's uh, right out of George Orwell. It's uh, double speak. And uh, finding the truth kind of takes a little while. 877-927-6648. Email me at path at tfnn.com. And, of course, you can always put a message in the den. And as we take a look here, I'll just keep a close eye on it. As I said, you're going to bounce around here a little ways. Yesterday, we were kind of in the same area and ended up closing a little higher. There's only one good signal that I have uh, right now that says that we could bottom, and that is how many uh, retail traders have been selling often the lows, especially on Friday. Generally, they, uh, they tend to throw in the towel at the lows, finally. This is a real, first real big kind of throw the baby out the bathwater, uh, specifically to retail traders. Uh, that was on Friday. So were we in some place that could hold? Uh, tough to say. On the high side, we can look at it about 40, 50 on the S&P. That would probably be extreme resistance at that level on the upside. And as we said a little earlier on the downside, uh, any close probably before uh, below 38.45 opens up uh, 37.48 and then 36.50 to go back and test the previous lows. Uh, why uh, the market is having conundrums uh, and uh, continues to be an enigma wrapped in a riddle until uh, Powell talks. Uh, why don't we go ahead and do some of the normal stuff we do, and then uh, we'll see what's uh, going on in the market. All just a little bit of history repeating. On this day in 1954, the first Fortran program is executed. Fortran was developed by IBM scientists who were looking for a better way to program the IBM 704 mainframe computer. It quickly became the dominant programming language for scientific and engineering applications. And uh, if you're a thousand years old and answer to the name of Methuselah, it is still used today. In fact, there's a thriving business of still trying to get data and run those programs uh, still today because no one wants to spend the money to upgrade either the hardware or the software especially in the area of high-performance computing, although I think that's 
a little stretching it there. A lot of uh, languages that are 10 times faster now than Fortran, although it's fairly simple. On this day in 1945, we find out that trying to build an entire four-bedroom house out of toothpicks is tough. So for computer stuff and big programs, we're going to try to go to something on a little higher level where we build walls and kitchens, not just uh, every individual small stick. And uh, that's kind of it. Uh, you, could, uh, you could write in assembler uh, individual codes for each thing the CPU needed to do. Or you can write a much more flowery and large way. And so most of the time today, compilers are better than what humans can do unless the human wants to spend 10 to 20 times longer uh, than uh, what the compiler does. 877-927-6648. Uh, let's go back to what's going on for today. Of course, the Fed announcement. The only other thing that really has my uh, interest at the moment uh, for bigger trends coming is a possible storm in the Gulf. Of course, they were supposed to have 19 uh, named storms, and of course, none of them have landed here in the United States. They were supposed to have eight or nine by this time. Uh, hurricane season is over on November 30th. This may be the first one that could get up into the Gulf area around Louisiana and uh, change the trajectory of crude. So keep an eye on it. It's way, way, way in the nosebleed section of the Gulf at the moment. But uh, pretty good tracks that show it probably going up into the Gulf of Mexico. And, of course, once it gets in there, everybody has to uh, amscray at and lay off those oil rigs. Uh, and, of course, this is at a time where we have probably only about 20 percent left in the strategic petroleum reserve if anything would happen to this way or of course we had the news with putin uh, deciding to uh, throw some nukes around this morning unclear just how bad it would be for us uh, now that we've uh, kind of used our seed corn uh, and really haven't decided to go back and add production on the other side of it uh, but uh yeah who am i uh, we just need to project what's going to happen. But uh, I, I'm looking for uh, either the storm or some other event to uh, kick off crude once more. My guess the next time it's going to go back up and retest that those highs somewhere around 170 or 180, uh, probably in the next three to nine, uh, three to six months, something like that. My guess is that once that uh, SPR oil quits flowing, we're going to have some real problems in uh, 877-927-6648. Okay, let's we'll start taking a look at some stuff. I thought it was pretty funny. We were talking yesterday about uh, Jim Cramer. Bring me the head of the false prophet, Jim Cramer. And in fact fallibly when he shorts something it tends to go the other way it was up about four or five bucks on nvidia uh it's just south out here today but uh i'm gonna, gonna continue to keep an eye on that um nothing like getting a lot of people short in an overly shorted stock already uh i'm just thinking this is the next meme stock if uh, they continue to pile in on it um and could it go down from then yeah but man, getting a lot of retailers short at lows, bad idea. In a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16-year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner Ready Development Stage Gold Project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 The dollar is going to make you holler up to one eleven and fifteen cents, and even a half a cent beyond that. Of course, a huge move on that. Let's take a quick look at the chart for gold futures. That should be GC, right? Okay, it's now down. Eh, about flat, really, on the day. But uh, I'm showing sixteen seventy eighty five for the last tick on it. So it's bounced back a little bit. Got down to almost 16.62, so that's kind of a nice little washout down at the bottom. Uh, we'll see whether any of these things can hold through the rest of the day. 20-year um, Treasury did bounce a little bit. Not very much volume in that today. In fact, not very much volume in the market today, too. Take a quick look at the TLT. 106.88, so that is a little up off the floor uh, we kind of were looking at the low 106s, maybe 106 and a nickel, looks like, from just eyeballing it. On the TLT, that's the 10, 20-year Treasury bonds, kind of what I use uh, to uh, as a, a rule of thumb on the greater market. Still way below the trend line, so I don't see much going on with that. Although, or, yeah. yeah, at some point, uh, people just end up leaving uh, equities when they get scared, retail traders especially, in buying bonds. And it's uh, out of the frying pan into the fire. One of the few things that, uh, what was his name, Joe, I want to say Graziola, but that's not Joe. Ah, I'll think of his name in a second. Big time guy because he picked one market downtrend. And he always had the theory. No, not Joe Batapaglia. Uh, this is Joe, the newsletter writer from Kansas City. Uh, to, 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 think of what we have here. Joe, do, do, do. yeah, I'll think of it. Uh, anyway, he had one theory, and that was uh, that uh, when you see bonds headed lower or something headed lower, kind of like the Titanic, everybody's going to run to the stern. All of the whole thing is going, yeah, Joe Granville. Thank you. I couldn't remember his name. I didn't believe anything that really said. He had one winning trade 
and parlayed that into a 20-year run of being wrong. Uh, and I think he was wrong just until 2008, <laughs> where he wasn't wrong anymore. But uh, there's somebody on the Internet used to have a uh, win-loss record for him, and he won a bunch in 87 and then never really kind of won again. Uh, but uh, sometimes uh, on TV, that's all you need. Be a one-time big winner, and uh, you can be on CNBC for the rest of your life. Anyway, as we see the TLT, um, I still don't see anything out here that uh, makes me believe this isn't headed to 101 uh, for the next big major milestone. You may have bounces like today, but again, probably out of the fire and into the frying pan. Uh, everybody's running to the stern of the Titanic, and it's just a few minutes away before everybody slides down the deck and into the drink. Uh, but that drink would be cold, and that's what we need in Florida right now. Okay, 877-927-6648 as we go into it. Now, after the bell tonight, uh, depending on how we do today, may set up a tone. And that tone will be for Lennar and KBH. And, of course, uh, higher interest rates uh, really are probably going to start hurting uh, retail sales. We saw some big moves uh, in numbers earlier in the week. I think actually yesterday. But uh, a lot of those folks saw higher interest rates coming and decided to climb in before they took off. So those housing starts were based on loans granted about three months ago. And, you know, it takes about that long to eh, three to seven months, depending on where you're at in the country, to start breaking ground. I think a lot of people were in a fairly big hurry. So uh, we have that, but uh, after this, this is probably the last big hurrah. KBH uh, at its lows, below 27.32 uh, today, um, could easily get you back to $24.78. That's the June 17th low. I'm going to say the odds that it hits that after earnings tonight, um, maybe not instantly, but soon at about 80%. I can't see this bouncing much unless everybody's short. I didn't look to see just how short this is, but we'll see. Uh, the only thing on these earnings is if everybody has the same idea, it's probably a bad idea. Uh, I probably shouldn't have said anything until I looked at it. it actually, it's not bad. 11% uh, yesterday, 15% before, 6.5% eh, before. They're, they're not huge, at least on a daily shorting basis. On the uh, bi-monthly, yeah, it's kind of up there. you got almost five days to cover. So it wouldn't be something I'd want to carry into short just because so many people could be on the wrong side of a uh, northbound cow, the south end of a northbound cow. Okay, and get some more. Say, okay, we'll go back to that in a second. Where is that? Get that, get that. Okay, the other one is the Lennar. A quick look and see if we have any disparity between those. Yeah, man. Eh. Kind of the same thing. Let's take a look and see what we have on short in interest for this one. Uh, only in. Okay, about the same. You've got just under five days to cover, which is fairly strong. If you're under unfamiliar uh, with days to cover, I kind of look at it, it more than the short percentage. That is, if you just took the last 30 or 60 day average for the for the volume of the stock, if the shorts all wanted to get out one time, how many days would it take only at that average volume to get out? So five days, they, you could have kind of some meme stocks in these in the short term. I wouldn't be going into earnings on anything that had five days to cover, but that is I. Uh, again, both of these things look like they're going to go back and retest previous lows. The question is, do they run all the shorts and then pull back uh, to the previous lows? Not uncommon when everybody thinks that they know the direction of the market. Uh, so that's one of those things. Do we have anything else? Um, earlier in the morning, uh, reporting already was General Mills and his brother, the Colonel. Uh, of course, uh, generally in uh, markets that are 
nervous. You go for things that people have to have, Clorox, cereal, uh, Colonel Mills, used to be a general. Um, I guess this nice gap higher this morning still cements it. You're back above some fairly uh, long-term resistance levels. You got decent volume. That's telling you that everybody's going to be going to the mattresses fairly quickly. Okay, got some emails here. We'll be back in a minute. Answer the Dread Pirate Z's question. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. As we come back, we've got a couple of questions and email that we'll answer in a minute. Uh, also, before the bell this morning, Stitch Fix. Or was it after the bell last night? I can't remember. Anyway, it was down about 50 cents earlier in the day, now uh, at about 5.06. But uh, it's hanging in there. Of course, once the darling of uh, the shutdown, uh, and, you know, whatever what do we have here. What's the low? Uh, 5.06 now. And, of course, it was 44.65 back on September 27th, so a year ago. So one-tenth the price. Um, so that's it. Anyway, uh, as, a, uh, as Jesse Livermore said, a stock's never too high in price to buy nor too low to sell. Because <laughs> it can always go lower, always can go higher. Uh, 
Okay, now we've got a couple more emails here. Uh, do you have any cues that you like to use on Powell Day? You know, before they started having the uh, press conferences, it was kind of one and done. But the whole idea of this press conference and the fact they can say anything at any time, the market will drastically react to it. I just stand back. I kind of wait until the dust clears. I like to see what happens at about 345 when everybody has to start thinking about whether they're going to hold overnight to get an indication. So I'm not predicting much of anything until we get to that point today. So uh, as uh, Warren Buffett likes to say, uh, money in the markets goes from the impatient to the patient. So I think uh, a little patience is covered on today. How does the XLE look? Uh, we'll take a look. I think we've got maybe another, uh, I think we've got 50 days or 58 days, something like that, to the election. Um, a lot of uh, the energy prices have been held down by huge uh, uh, taps of the strategic petroleum reserve. Uh, most of that oil has been going to foreign sources. And that overall, it's kept the price down of oil and uh, satiated those who don't want oil in the United States by doing it. But it's kept the prices down overall. Um, we're about 80 percent through all of that. So we've got about 20 percent left. I'm thinking that uh, once we're tapped out on that, uh, most of the OPEC nations or other suppliers are going to figure it out fairly quick and they'll start raising rates and there won't be a lot we can do. Uh, but pray that uh, there's not a dust up in Taiwan or a bigger dust up uh, in Russia, Ukraine or anywhere else because we'll be tapped out of that strategic petroleum reserve. 877-927-6648. Anyway, uh, looking at the chart on the XLE, uh, a little bit of a retracement. Um, I think you're going to get one more chance at uh, 7528, the September 19th low, uh, and whether or not you're able to get it. But, uh, you know, I'd be looking at that. Uh, let's see. Got some other questions out here. Microsoft uh, uh, is having its dog and pony here in about 30 days or so. It is testing the lows uh, and actually on fairly lighter volume. Energy is about the same on the way up and the way down. So the best you probably would hope for uh, is that this is in a bigger trading range from 394 back to 240-ish. Uh, you did test yesterday the volume of 46 million shares with 26 million shares. So not a bad day. It went below it. It closed back above it. Uh, probably the strongest uh, overall long-term outlook uh, for tech stocks um, that's easily visible, but at the same time, uh, being the best ha uh, house in a bad crack neighborhood doesn't mean you're going up, probably just less going down, which uh, I think would probably mean a Paris trade between something far worse than Microsoft and maybe something like Microsoft on the long side, if that's the way you wanted to play it. But I think there are better other plays out there. Uh, to do okay. What else do we have? Take a look out here. Now yeah, we're flat now on the S and P cash. As I said, don't get too excited until that 3:45 time. We are at fairly decent support, um, but we've got probably 200 points higher, and either 100 or 200 points lower. Uh, we are getting to that point where in about four or five days, uh, uh, if you just look at it seasonally, you gen tend to find a low. I don't think we're probably going to find the low today. Maybe it just goes sideways or something. But generally, the next couple of days tend to be have the worst days of uh, the market historically over the last 150 years. So, eh, I mean, just playing the odds Probably not a huge move. Uh, doesn't mean you can't win by going against the odds. They're not huge, but they're you know at 65, 35, something like that uh, for the last few days. So we'll keep an eye on that. Okay, uh, other stocks, NVDA. Oop, if you can type it correctly, NVDA. 
uh, as we started off the show. Kind of interesting play out here. Still above what you had. And not a bad-looking chart uh, if you're looking for a short squeeze. I do kind of like it. Uh, it does have a little bit of Joe DiNapoli double repose in it. The one thing you would really like to see is a lot of volume before the end of the day. Volume's not bad, um, but you generally want a bigger candle when you break back over the 3 by 3 It's kind of wimpy at the moment. Uh, others uh, in the usual suspects, AMD, uh, a little more on it. Kind of the same uh, style of pattern, but again, not much in the way of volume. That may change rapidly by the end of the day. We'll go to Apple. Uh, same kind of thing. You should be getting a lot of energy and volume today. You are not. Doesn't mean you can't crawl up a little bit farther on lighter volume. Uh, NFLX, kind of interesting. Uh, we'll go through uh, Netflix and uh, Disney. Uh, but uh, both of these companies working very hard on the propaganda. They've had some real stinkers. And uh, uh, they are doing everything, including leaning on uh, Rotten Tomatoes, the movie review site. Uh, to make sure people don't pound on movies that look rather horrible. Um, Netflix has got one. Um, you did test the previous high on higher volume, so there is a chance that you're going to retest the, at least the 250 area on Netflix. Um, energy was a little bit better off the September lows. Uh, Disney also uh, trying to make sure that no one uh, – tells uh, anybody that the king has no clothes, uh, holding up uh, reviews on it. Um, Amazon, too, uh, didn't let anybody, I think it was five or seven days, didn't let anybody post reviews uh, because they were 95% horrible for its uh, Lord of the Rings uh, reboot. Uh, and they put a billion dollars on that reboot. Um, and it's terrifically bad. Most people tuned out by the second or third episode of it. Uh, so it's doing extremely poorly. Walt Disney has some other ones, uh, kind of the same thing. Spent a lot of money on uh, She-Hulk. Uh, it's not doing well. Um, they're all trying to make sure that no one actually says that they're horrible on uh, social media and, and sites like Rotten Auto, which I, I think just really makes the problem big. We'll be back again in a short time. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors.
Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. relatively flat, maybe a little bit uh, higher uh, out here. It's, uh, it's kind of thin and wispy trading. Eh, what are we going to call it? Up 15 uh, on the S&P at the moment. So, uh, again, it's just going to flail around here probably until the close. Don't get too excited one way or the other. Uh, his main message hadn't changed. Maybe all the double top secret uh, handshake Things have changed. I see that on there. Uh, anyway, the question was, uh, how bad is it for Disney uh, from uh, Jake? And I, I think the big problem they have is that they just can't quit making stinkers around Star Wars. They paid $4.5 billion for the property. Uh, they've made one decent series out of it, uh, three bad ones, and th I think two bad movies. Uh, but uh, they got yet another stinker coming called Andor, and everybody's up in arms uh, uh, for fans that have seen the original trailer, thinking it is just as bad as Obi-Wan and the other ones. The only good thing they've had out of all of that uh, was The Mandalorian. And, of course, uh, there's a, it, somebody, one of our gentle listeners and one of my subscribers asked me why I don't like being in uh, uh, movie and film production it is just this is the history that is a lot of people think that they know what's going on they hire a bunch of in the early days they hire a bunch of creative folks and leave them alone then they ask to justify their income uh, so they hand notes around they think they're, they're, they're the creative people and they slowly stomp out anything good that was coming out at the beginning. So you'll see the history of movie uh, production is there'll be a uh, you know Warner Brothers or something like that, and they'll have a hot five or seven years, and they'll run it. And the same thing. It didn't matter what it, what it is, what uh, movie chain or whatever it is. They I, executives who are non-creative cannot help getting involved in being and stomping out the creative part. And at this point, Disney is just kind of, for video production, is just kind of the McDonald's. Yeah, if you want it good and fast and cheap, you can get it. But it's not going to be very satisfying, and you may even feel a little bad uh, an hour or two after eating one of their big greasy burgers. So I'm not a big fan of these folks uh, going after quantity instead of quality. Uh, and two, you can see the stinky fingerprints, at least on Disney and Netflix, on a lot of the stuff coming out now. Again, that was during the uh, time where uh, the pandemic ruled and these folks really couldn't go to the movie theater directly. Uh, so, yeah, the the balance of power went uh, to these big streaming places and they decided to pit their big massive mitts all over stuff and run it for the most part. There's still some good stuff out here but uh, when you've got to cover up um, just how bad your stuff is by uh, threatening uh, other platforms or an Amazon case uh, for its Lord of the Rings 
uh, not letting anybody put reviews on your own site, you know it stinks. So anyway, 877-927-6648 as we wait for Powell's stuff to go on. Uh, dollar blow off top possible. Uh, we talked about that yesterday a little bit. Uh, do I still have that? Um, that's gold finally going higher. He must have said something. Of course, I don't get to listen to it because I'm on the air. Uh, let's look at the dollar. We went through the uh, levels, uh, and it's 109 and a quarter, uh, or was yesterday. So we'll look at that again. But uh, you, any close back below about 109 uh, would be a double repo below off top. Um, at uh, 110 and 42 cents or 110 and 41 cents on the dollar index, uh, you'd still have another buck and a half to really drop uh, before the end of the day. Maybe tomorrow you get the confirmation on it. Uh, but certainly a blow off into one. What's the high of the day out here? On the DX. Uh, to, 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 to 111 and 33 cents. So remember that, uh, 110 50 cents now. We've got a uh, little hanging man uh, forming on the dollar, but I don't know if you can make a great deal out of it. Uh, well, we're back up to 309, uh, yeah, 38.92 on the S&P cash. Okay. Uh, NASDAQ's up 133. Again, probably a little bit... Uh, Thing. Let's take a quick look at NVIDIA. I'm just figuring that with as many people probably that piled on, yeah, you, you got a nice 6% uh, bounce in NVIDIA today. And um, uh, certainly everybody that Kramer talked into going short on Tuesday is underwater. Uh, to, to, to what else do we have out here? Let's take a quick look at volume. Uh, it is extremely light, still extremely light. Um, yet mostly we have almost uh, in the high sixes, uh, low sevens when we start the show. What do we have here? About 12 more minutes to go. Uh, doing about 6.2 billion shares. So there isn't a lot of volume to the upside. There isn't a lot of volume to the downside. Uh, so you better stay frosty and don't stay greedy. Because I don't think there's a lot into this. This could all unwind fairly quickly. Okay, uh, got some other questions out here we'll get to. Uh, blow off dollar, possible. Let's take a quick look at the GLD. See if this thing comes back in. Uh, well, to get back into the trading range, you'd need 158.03. You did pierce it. You had kind of a reversal signal. It turned to dust. That reversal signal was on the 1st of September. Uh, you came down on fairly decent volume of 13.2 million shares on, what is that, the 15th. Going sideways, you're still just in the trading range of that day of the 15th, at least on the GLD. Uh, you did go down and break out the lows. Um, you could get a close over the three by three. But uh, yeah, we may still need some consolidation to get that done. There's not a great signal off the bottom for gold just yet. Maybe something else happens. Okay. Uh, that's on a medium term, not on the next five or 10 minutes, by the way. I don't do anything but dailies on the show. Okay, got a couple more. Question to take a look at Amazon. Uh, yeah, I mean, you're going into Christmas. It's hard to stay short. The chart does look fairly good. You filled this gap from, what is that? The 29th of July on fairly light volume. Probably is about as good as it's going to get. We'll be back in a minute.
Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. Commodities, Powell says that they probably top. You can see that in the liners, which makes me think that, uh, well, it's probably time to buy commodities. <laughs> Isn't that isn't that the way it is? He's I think he's just cursed now. And of course, all we can remember is that uh, inflation is transitory, as he said before. He didn't say that today. I was that was mocking him. I was a mocker. Anyway, I'm not going to get too excited one way or another. Volume still is fairly low. Only doing about six and a half billion shares. On the day, even yesterday, we did nine and a half billion. So not a big day. Now, not uncommon to get a lot of volume before the end of the day. Everybody's trying to look at this as the glass half empty. It's not a full glass or a glass that's a little bit more than half full. Um, and, uh, you know, it, I don't know what else he's going to say today. But if I was betting, and I am not, I'd say that the market closes somewhat flat. <laughs> Uh, from all the uh, competing uh, signals I see, at least throughout this. Now, maybe we start moving out tomorrow, but I, it's hard to see. Anyway, we're up 34 points on the S&P cash now. Uh, again, 40.50 is resistance on the high side if we can get out of here. And, uh, 100 and well, 140 points down to the next support level from here at 
877-927-6648. Uh, we're already done for the day. Again, uh, a little nicer when you can actually listen to it and, and watch the trading. i got to kind of talk and chew gum at the same time here on the air. So I'll look at it a little bit more. i got an update going out for subscribers. Uh, but uh, eh, I don't tend to make any big prognostications until he's done at least speaking, which will be about 3.15. Hang on for uh, Tom O'Brien, who will take us through the end of the day. And uh, that's about it. So when you can, not when you have to. We'll see you here tomorrow. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible.